What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jet Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I know you saw Shang-Chi last night. Um, looking forward to having that conversation with you. Um, I'm going to go see it tomorrow with a, a friend of ours, AJ, and my son. So um, I'm looking forward to that tomorrow at 1 a.m. I mean, not at 1 a.m., at 1 p.m., so as soon as I get through that film, I'm going to hit you up and discuss or talk about when we can talk about this film. But um, let's not overlook overlook the the 99 percent audience score that Shang Chi is getting. Um, Brian, you sent me a text saying that it's tracking to hit about 60 mil 65 in the 60s in the 60s okay yeah. um what do you think up about that audience from, score yeah up from the original estimate was 40 45 yeah. 55 was the tracking number based on the thursday box office of about 9 million which was below the 13 million that black widow did but above the 7 million that f9 did uh people now looking maybe for a 65 million dollar up Friday to Sunday, because this will obviously benefit a little bit because Labor Day is not a school day. So they'll be able to up a little bit more on the Monday. Um, but yes, the audience score at uh, 99% versus the critic score at 92%. Um, so do you think it'll pick up last minute? Because we checked, I sent you a screenshot of the available seats at the IMAX theater where I'm going to go see the movie and there was a bunch of seats available. You think we might get a last minute surge well i mean i think the revising up the first weekend box office would suggest that at least a portion of the audience that was on the fence decided to go thursday night and obviously when you have scores the way they are that usually means word of mouth is also going to be good so that's probably going to mean a few more walk-ups this weekend in spite of everything that's going on um in the environment and you also have to kind of throw in i mean you're you know in new york new jersey some of these places the new orleans places that have been ravaged by you know storms and hurricanes like yeah. is that going to prevent some folks who might have otherwise gone to a theater from getting to a theater you know that might be a thing yeah um, you know it's very hard for me to talk too much about this without talking <laughs> so i'm just gonna <laughs> say that like I do think this is the kind of film conceptually that if we were in a somewhat normal world, and I think I made this point before, it wasn't the kind of film where you were going to come out with a 150 weekend or a 200 weekend, because it is an origin film. It's a new yeah. character, a new story that doesn't have necessarily a built-in brand over generations with kids and with families. So it's the kind of film that if it was really good and crowd pleasing, what you'd mm -hmm. be more interested in is week two, week three, is the box office only going down like 30%, 25%, as opposed to a more standard 50 to 60. That's the, for this film to ultimately have worked, that's always how I sort of thought about. And I predicted like in a normal world, I thought this actually could challenge the Batman in terms of global box office. Well, because at the time we didn't know that China wasn't going to kill this. Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other thing, but like, and that was part of my thesis was if it was good, it would come out and then you would get repeat business and then people would get kind of sucked in and it would have this sort of longer shelf life yeah. than your typical, typical sort of comic book film. So it seems like we're getting a hint of that, but obviously with this environment, it's not going to be the yeah. same what it, yeah. what it could have been. And I don't have it as a list of, um, uh, as a topic in our list, but let's still talk about it briefly about you know, China and I having a, a release date for this film. What are your thoughts in terms of obviously globally, uh, the take is gonna be is not gonna be significant because of that of China not having that release date. I don't want I mean, we've spoken about this in the past, um, but it was referring more so to Black Widow. Um, where there was more politics involved and there was some sort of um, holiday situation yeah, exactly. um, happening with that. 
what do you think? I mean, we can sort of speculate as to the reasoning behind this. Um, but what do you think of that not being or, or playing a factor in its overall global box? Well, it's huge. I mean, statistically, China delivers more than 20% of Marvel's global box. So, you yeah. know, billion dollar film, 200 million bucks just vanishes into thin air if, you, yeah. if it doesn't get shown in China. You know, the Black Widow, as you said, was more about a theatrical holiday. The timing, I think, with the last set of delays really kind of hurt that film's prospects. But I don't think it was really about a conceptual or political opposition to the film. It was more about the timing. So with Shang-Chi, the question is, and with Eternals, the question has been a little more politicized, right? It's like, yeah. is, the, is the content and the cast being Asian-centric or Simu Liu being Chinese-born but not Chinese-raised? Like, are those questions that are holding this film back? Similarly, Chloe Zhao has been somewhat outspoken in her support, I believe, of Hong Kong. You know, that obviously was an issue with the Mulan release. The star of that film was very pro-Hong Kong, and, and China really kind of went came down pretty yeah. hard on that so uh yeah look i mean it'd be a huge blow to marvel if one or or both of those films is or all three of these films is not able to have a a, a full and normal chinese box office um you know I, I don't know anything about how their censorship process works but yeah i think the one thing i can safely say without getting you in trouble or anyone in trouble <laughs> on the, about the film is I think it would be a shame for the local audience there to, and in Asia in general to not be able, if they're not able to see this, I think it would be, it would miss that a significant part of the DNA of this film is an homage to Asian cinematic history and Asian yeah. culture. Yeah. And it's done incredibly well and incredibly respectfully. And I would I just... I think it would be a shame if the people over there didn't get to see that sort of on display and sort of blockbuster, you know, form. So, cause we really haven't really seen that. Um, we've seen, you know, Joy Luck Club, Crazy Rich Asians. Those are different genres. We have not seen it done in this genre ever. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with you. It, it is a shame and it just sucks that, for whatever reason they don't want to show it or they don't want to release it that you know people are missing out on, on something that um, seems to be for the most part uh, being well regarded as a spectacular film so let's see man let's see um yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you think about. I don't know if you've seen Chang Chi, but if you have, let us know in the comment section below what you think about this movie. We're going to be having a discussion of, about this uh, sometime next week. After I've seen it, who knows? Maybe this weekend. I don't know, but we're definitely we'll have the box about. office numbers by then too. So that'll Ex also exactly. So definitely. Uh, so probably Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll talk about this film. Um. So let's get into. Uh, the topics of discussion for this episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Uh, Robert Rodriguez says Boba Fett over delivers. He is, if you read the article, obviously the, this, uh, the links will be in the description so you can read it for yourself. He is hype on this film. Let me sort of uh, give you a little bit of what he said. Um, I can't say anything about it at all right now, but it's coming out in December. Wait until you see what's coming. It's going to blow your mind. That's all I can say. I can talk it up all I want because I know it over delivers. It, it, it's way, it way over delivers. People are going to be so pumped when they see it. Now, this is not Tom Holland talking. This is could have fooled me, but yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> but he is hyped on this film. I mean, this this series um, coming out in December, and I've always known Boba Fett the character, and is mostly based on what other people have said and how they see him as. You know, he's a badass. You know, he's he, he's the guy that you don't want to mess with. He, he he's he's the guy. 
And so uh, what are your thoughts on his, uh, I guess, um, what was, what would be the perfect word? His enthusiasm and his confidence in how he is describing how this will go over with fans. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure this show needed that, did it? I guess that was my first reaction was I think the Mandalorian's got a lot of credibility as a world and Boba Fett's introduction last season was received very well. Tamir, Tamira Morrison back in the role. Robert Rodriguez, people know, I think as a director, a writer, a filmmaker, I don't think his reputation is much in doubt. So I don't, I don't know that this show needed a ton of hype. There's not a lot, there's no other Star Wars show yeah. live action that we're getting um, yeah. this holiday season. So um, I, I actually read it and I kind of was like, almost wish he hadn't said that, but. Because it, it sets the expectation the only, high, right? Yeah, exactly. Like why, I mean, the, the only question I guess I would have is to your reference about Boba Fett as a, as a mythology and you know he's always been the the ultimate sort of cameo character right i I can't really think of characters who had such little screen time that became such a phenomenon over a long period of time yeah so this really will be the first time that boba fett is the star yeah yeah of something and that's my only question does boba fett work as a star versus the drops in steals the show for five to ten minutes and and then you know exits in, in his ship yeah i would assume that a lot of his uh i guess aura and how people speak of him is through i guess people who've read novels and way where, where he's talked about and perhaps uh even animated shows I, I don't know i don't watch the animated shows too much um, but i think that's part of it right it's the legend Yes. In some ways, the stuff you don't see when you see it becomes less. And that's, yes, that's yes. my only concern is Boba Fett as star is it does it somehow become less because he's now in it more, which I know is counterintuitive, but with yeah. this sort of character may be the case. That being said, obviously, we'll watch it. I think yeah, a lot of, of the people are ready for a Star Wars live action show after Marvel has obviously uh, given you a lot over the course of this year. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, does this further um, bring more excitement to to the show, the Book of Fett? Let's see. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it, and I'm pretty sure when it was announced and we saw that last shot of Boba Fett sitting in that th- throne, you know, we already amped, you know, but him saying what he said now and how he said it, um. Or just imagine, imagining how he said it, because he sounds like he's like, you got you, you ain't ready, <laughs> you know. So let's see, man. Let's see. Um, next up, HBO Max's Batgirl script is done. Right now, I don't care. Is all I can say. Um, we do know, uh, uh, well, we, there is, uh, I don't know if it's confirmation. You can let me know, Brian, if this is, is this, if this was confirmed that JK Simmons is going to be in this film, not confirmed, r- r- rumored, not confirmed. Is, okay. So yeah. we certainly still don't know, um, what I guess universe this is in. Um, but that would, that will once we know that will inform me as to where this is set and how and what the inspiration for Batgirl is. Again, I've always said, and, I, and, I, and I'll hand it over to you after I say this, is that if Batman is in not some way uh, the driving force for her to become Bat, uh, Batgirl, I am not... I'm really not too interested in this. Brian, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I just remain a little surprised at what, what, what's the urgency here. Like this thing is really seems like it's on, you know, turbo to, uh, to get other than the merger, they are just trying to get this up on screen. But, um, you know, I, I don't know that there's as much steam behind this. And again, you know, I wonder if there's any brand confusion because you have the Batwoman series, which has kind of been uh, kind of 
little bit of a bad luck run there, which obviously with the the actress changing over and kind of how you know it's just I don't know that that series just hasn't really felt like it's gotten a full fair shake on CW and 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 now you're gonna bring Bat Girl in. Um, as I said, Titans is featuring a version of Barbara Gordon this year as well. So it was a lot kind of percolating in that area. And I, I don't know, this, this one, I think will have to be excellent to really get an audience. I think, I think yeah. the bar is pretty high. Whereas I kind of feel like Matt Reeves Gotham series when we get it, I think yeah. that'll be good. But I'm saying, I think even if that was okay, that will come with enough brand that people will kind of at least investigate the show. Yeah. Um, this one, I think it's going to have to be like hit, get critics talking, force people to come in and see it. I don't think everyone's going to line up for the premiere. Well, this is being streamed on HBO Max, correct? Right. That's what I'm saying. So I don't, th- yeah. I don't necessarily think there's going to be like a day one big audience, right? I think it's going to be one that's going to have to catch viral and then kind of people get yeah. something to it. I mean, we do have two directors that are uh, that were that directed Bad Boys Three, which uh, everyone seems to to love that film. I still haven't seen it, and I, I hope to see it one one of these days. But um, yeah, let's see, man. Let's see, because and it speaks to what you said in a, in a prior episode, where because of the new regime coming in and next year. People are throwing out all their ideas and spending the money that they need to spend to get all this content out to see what sticks, to see what's good, and hopefully get picked up by them to continue. But um, let's see. Let's see what happens. Are you excited for Bad Girl? I'm not, but I want to know if you guys are. Um, next up, Umbrella Academy, Rap Season 3. Yes, <laughs> yes, because we... Listen, that kid... Is, is is fantastic he's the star of that show and uh the premise is also uh the way they do this is very very well done i'm interested to see how that kid looks now because <laughs> if, if he can maintain that same look which would be difficult because he's grown um i'm interested in seeing what transpires in this new because i guess the the Time works differently in this world, whereas you affect the past. If you whatever you do in the past affects the future, it seems like. So now they're in the last last we left off. They're in a world where their mentor or the, their leader has a new group, and they're no longer the group that he created. And so there may be some sort of obviously uh, obvious battle between those two factions, right? The 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 Arrow Academy. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Are you excited for this, bro? Yeah, absolutely. I, so I think it, it really dovetails with the Batgirl discussion because I think this is how Batgirl becomes successful, right? This show didn't come in with any known characters or yeah, you know, not really at all. any huge, I mean, you know, really no huge actors or actresses headlining this. Some really nice actors, Colm Fiore, uh, I guess it's now Elliot Page, but like people you've seen before, but, you know, there was no... You know, there was no like there was no equivalent of that leading this show, but it gained steam because it was well done. People, you know, you were texting me about it. I had other friends texting me saying, hey, "Have you seen this?" And then I got on board. And then I texted other people. That's how Batgirl can be good, is if it can be at at this kind of level. I think it's also funny because this show went multiversal before multiversal became yeah. the thing that everyone did. So yeah. now you're, you're going to see their version of multiverse, but they've actually been doing it since yeah, kind of the yeah. beginning of this sh- beginning of the show. So they kind of got it down pat. I'm looking forward to it because the characters are great. And so yeah. to see the characters played differently, uh, we're obviously going to be in a world where, oh man, the names are rusty. The one, number six, has yes. it died? I think it's six. Who ah, died. yes, yes, yes. He's yes. alive and he, sound, he seems like he's kind of a badass in this one. So yeah. I think that's going to be pretty interesting, but... Yeah, and I think that there's been this show has had a nice healthy gap between seasons to where you can get amped and get ready and then rewatch the old one and then kind of you know zoom into the new one. So yeah, exactly. On. Yeah, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of um are you looking forward to season three of Umbrella Academy? Uh let us know in the comment section below. Uh next up, Daredevil star Charlie 
Charlie Cox shuts down Spider-Man uh, No Way Home rumors. Then there was another article where he, no, he said... He shut down one. He shut down yeah, one rumor. Yeah, That's it. Yeah. We'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> what was the other one? No, what he... He didn't shut down the big one. He shut down one specific one, which is funny. Ah, which was a specific one? His arms. Okay, 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 okay. The theory that he was his hairy arms in the in the that he shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very careful not to not to shut down the other one. Yes, 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 yes. Listen, we've already confirmed it a long time ago that Charlie Cox is in this film. Um. And now he's just being very careful how he speaks because, you know, the MCU frowns upon people who say things, ask Mark Ruffalo, ask, any, ask Molina, even though he probably doesn't care, you know, that you just don't address these questions that people want answers to. You just be like, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that. You know, they just, I guarantee you what they do now is they take the Jonathan Majors clip and they just send it to all the cast members. <laughs> like, just read that. Watch this that? guy read that. That's all you got to do. Exactly, exactly. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Exactly. Exactly, man. Um, Brian, is there any doubt that he is not in this film? No, he, he's in he's in the movie and he's in the universe and I think yeah. he's you know I think what he's also trying to do is he's trying to be very polite and sort of say like he appreciates that there's as many people that wanted wanted him back and wanted to see him back but I think in sort of acknowledging that he's also tacitly implying yeah I'm back we give the people what we want so yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I think, but I think he all he was saying was yes it's not me in the office with the paperwork slamming it down on the desk by the yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, again, I'll reiterate, you know, Kevin Feige is not going to what but let's first say that this that, you know, Marvel Studios listens and we've said this in the past, they, they listen to to the people and people loved Charlie Cox, Ch- Charlie Cox um, um, portrayal of Daredevil. And I'm pretty sure Kevin was one of those people. And because the Daredevil series and that part of um, the MCU, which was not, you know, this was not done by Marvel Studios. This was done by Netflix. There was still some uh, connection to the MCU and the events that happened in, in Avengers, the first Avengers film. So it just made sense to bring that over. And, um, you know, Kevin's not going to waste his time trying to answer questions about why did you replace Charlie Cox or any other character that people seem to love. Iron Fist, replace him. They're going to do that. So let's see. Uh, So let us know in the comments below, do you think Charlie Cox is going to be in this film? Um, And what do you want him to do? What what do you want him to do in this movie? Because I think we're in the camp of less is more. Yeah, I think we'll take a lawyer appearance from Matt Murdock. We'll wait on the Daredevil, thing. but do you want him in the costume fighting in the in the final act? I'd be curious yeah. if you want that. Yeah. yeah, I'd say this that we're most likely going to get just Char- Charlie Cox's parents as as the the lawyer. But to see a scene where he's shaking somebody down and trying to get some answers, I wouldn't mind seeing that as well. Just as you know, a small scene to set the stage right uh let us know in the conversation below what you guys think about that um next up mark ruffalo responds to rumors of hulk's appearance in moon knight speaking of yeah <laughs> listen everybody knows what i feel about mark ruffalo's portrayal of the hulk um, in the beginning, it was good. I liked where they, it was going, but then it's just after Thor Ragnarok, it was downhill from that. I don't really care too much about um, this version of the Hulk 
Uh, will he get replaced? I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. But it's not like Mark Ruffalo is a bad guy. He seems like a really nice guy and that, you know, Kevin is not, you know, it's not like he's Ed Norton and demanding stuff or Edgar Wright where I have to go because Mark Ruffalo is just dead. Whatever you want me to do, coach. <laughs> and he's not going to let him go because of that. Brian, what do you think? So I have a question for you, which is, yeah. I, I know what you don't like, and I tend to agree with you, the sort of, I don't know, petty verification of Professor Hulk, which is kind of what they did. Yeah. What if, since we got a show called What If, what if Mark Ruffalo persists in the MCU as Bruce Banner, but the Incredible Hulk becomes another persona? Now we know in She-Hulk he's appearing, so there will be another, so Jennifer Walters will exist with the capacity to become the Hulk. But what about, I don't know, an Amadeus Cho? Like what about another version of the comics Hulk and Mark Ruffalo just be, he remains in the universe, but he's now Bruce Banner and somehow he's in human form and he's no longer no longer the green monster. Problem for you or okay for you? I mean, it's okay, although I'd like to see the Hulk version that, you know, I want to see that World War, War Hulk version. I want to see the savage Hulk. I want to see the Hulk that's this unstoppable force. I want to see Bruce that. Bruce Banner to be that alter ego for that. Yes. That, that matters to you, okay. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. And, and listen, and let me be clear. This is to me, it's not Mark Ruffalo's fault that the Hulk though is the way he is. I think it has to do more with Marvel, I guess not really going there with that character and deciding to play it. I don't know if this is the right word for it, but safe and make it more goofier uh and going that route then to make him this um um character that's like you know mortified in, 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 in and wanted to become the hulk and, and wanted to get rid of the hulk instead of accept i think it was just too soon for his acceptance of the hulk mm -hmm. i wanted to see that terror in him that the reluctance of becoming the hulk same, similar to how Ed Norton played it, right? I wanted to see that played out a little more. Maybe it's because I, I, I watched when I was a kid, watched uh, seasons, and even when even when if if it comes up now, I watch it and I just love Bix, Bill Bixby's portrayal of the human factor. Well, that, and, so I ask because I don't uh -huh. think when I see these rumors, my working assumption is he is not in these shows necessarily as the hulk anymore that's just my yeah 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 I, so I, you know what i mean like i think he's and i know that in the in end game he there was no transformation he just was both personas mm -hmm. but since this is marvel and you can do anything you want i just in my mind i'm having a tough time contextualizing okay if he's in the she hulk series are they really going to line up two green hulks side by side for an action scene I feel like no, because I feel like that would take away from elevating She-Hulk, which we have doubts about, but like trying yeah. to do that. In the same way, like if he's in Moon Knight and Oscar Isaac is trying to put his fingerprints on a new persona and character, having a giant green monster that we all yeah. know and love, coming that kind of takes away from that. Well, so it takes away. To be Bruce to me. Yes, for, yes, yes. I, I agree with you. But I just hope it's not the Bruce Banner of, the, of Thor Ragnarok. Fair. Or even at the end, of, or even the end of Infinity War, when he's kind of yes. scared and he's in the Hulkbuster. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that, but that's yeah. That's what I, I, that's the character I, I I don't care too much for. But um, let us know in the comment section below what you think about Mark Ruffalo uh, possibly appearing in Moon Knight, and you know, and his portrayal as the as Bruce Banner, and 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 you know, because he played the Hulk, he played Professor Hulk. I mean, to me, he just sounded goofy, man. To me, he just sounded, I don't know. But let, let us know in the comment section below uh, what, what are your thoughts on that. Next up, 
Uh, Black Panther 2 set photo may point to Julia Lewis Dreyfus' appearance um, in in the Black Panther. So it seems like they sort of they're certainly setting her up. Um, she's in a recruitment phase, I think, right? And she's going to be sort of like Nick Fury was um, in Iron Man, and in in that first i guess that first um iteration all the way up until avengers you know that guy that's knows what's going on and and is is hiring or or, or getting these characters together to form some sort of a team obviously we know is is thunderbolt um but what are your thoughts, Brian, on this possibility of her showing up in Black Panther 2? And who was she who would she be approaching in this film? Well, I think that's the more interesting question because we right yeah. now we've got we've got um US Agent and we've got new Black Widow. So they're kind of on the team. We know that. Yes. So it's so you kind of have one questionable moral ethics character and then one pretty firmly heroic character on the team at least as far as we know so who's she coming after and then this and by the way i should say we should throw a get well in there for letitia wright apparently was injured and had to go to the hospital on the set of this movie so hopefully yes. nothing, nothing serious there but um but yeah i mean you're right i mean the, the nick fury comparison i mean i think is probably the most apropos and that's Probably not a coincidence, given that they are love interests in the comics, and I would assume that yeah. will have to collide at some point in this yeah. universe. Yeah. Um, so, I, look, I'm all for it. I think we could probably start a pretty humorous derby between like her, Sam Jackson, J.K. Simmons. Like, what, what, like, what celebrity is doing the best job of like dollars per second of screen time <laughs> across their universe? Because she's Simmons, now, in, she is officially in the mix, right? If she's yeah, yeah, in this yeah. movie, she's officially in the mix for like, I'm in for 30 seconds and I get paid like $3 million or <laughs> yeah, yeah. something like that. I think J.K. Simmons is the one coming He's on. winning, right? He might be the leader oh, in the clubhouse, he, right? Because he's in DC and in Marvel. Correct. You know, <laughs> so see, he's getting it from both places. So, um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on uh, who? Let us know in the comment section. Who do you think she is going to be recruiting in this film? Because to me, it just doesn't. I, don't, I, I just can't see um, which character that she would be, be interested in. So let's see. Um, next up, The Suicide Squad becomes the most watched DC film on HBO Max. Okay. Um, I would have to defer to you, Brian, and ask what are your what, what do you think um, this is the result of? At first thought, I think it would possibly be word of mouth, um, and that's it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, and it's not by a small amount. So I think the numbers that have been quoted, at least for the first two weeks, would indicate you know nearly a million more households watched this than watched uh, Wonder Woman 1984. And mm -hmm. the audience for this is all, not quite, but like almost double what it was reported for Zack Snyder's Justice League. So the real audience, like I, that would be a streaming hit any way you cut it. I think it speaks to some of the things we discussed that this movie, you know, if you if you kind of are thinking about like the heat, the heat meter, it just didn't get high enough to force people into the theater. Yeah. And so with a day and date, but the reviews were good enough. You know, James Gunn has a bit of a brand. The trailers are pretty look pretty fun. Like I think it did enough for people to say like, hey, I want to make, I want to carve out two hours of my time to watch this at home. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to go shell out, especially in the climate we have now, to go see it. And it all fits with this thesis of like, even if there had been no pandemic and no day and date release, I don't think this film would have been a mega hit. Yeah, Fox neither. Films. No, it wouldn't have done what Suicide Squad, the first one did. No, no way. No way. Uh, but, you know, 
it would have been interesting to see how many people would have actually paid, a, let's say, a, a premier access level. That was uh, a good yeah, to see if people would have actually paid as much money as they paid for Black Widow. Um, I don't know. And I think it says, look, I mean, James Gunn wrote and directed most of Peacemaker. I think it says there is an audience for this universe on the streaming platform. So I do think, like, it, if I'm looking at, if I'm HBO Max, like if I'm Casey Boyd, like I'm looking at these numbers on Suicide Squad, the movie, and I'm saying, well, I'm feeling better about Peacemaker's prospects as a streaming limited series now. Yeah. So... And James Gunn, I think, has actually said Peacemaker is basically Suicide Squad 2, which I thought was an interesting comment because I don't think we had heard that a lot of the squad members are in that series. But I had mentioned to you that it, based on the movie, it almost felt like they needed Bloodsport to be um, in the show yeah. the way they set up Cena. But, you know, so maybe he is. Maybe that's an indication that there are more of the squad members going to be on that show than have been been reported but anyway so that show comes out next in, like in january january i think yeah wow. very early in the year let's see man let's see uh I, I just for me i'm looking forward to seeing peacemaker and see how this uh show turns out um it's just that outfit man how much you know that outfit <laughs> If he's in regular clothing, maybe, and then every once in a while, he. But to be to have that outfit on for the whole, that's gonna be tough to watch. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Um, next up, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. There's a rumor that suggests Scarlet Witch will face off with an X-Men hero. This is just a rumor. It'll be true, Brian. What X-Men will see, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard for me to think about which one exactly. I don't think this is, I don't think this, this is gonna happen. In my opinion, I think this is just rumor. Although they are seemingly trying to introduce, or we've had the discussion that the way they're going to be going about introducing mutants, it's going to, you know, they're going to salt bay it. They're going to, you know, very, you know, sprinkle it in. Um, I just don't see how in this film, what would lead up to that and, and it's not to say that this x-men is going to be an x-men when we see it he's just gonna you know he's we he, we know him to be an x-men but it's going to be very interesting to see if um this actually happens and who it will be your thoughts brian Ooh, uh i'm with you uh think I would say odds are lower that this is true. Feels more like something that would be in the category of you're all in the writer's room kicking around ideas and someone says, hey, what if we, and then you go around the table and are like, eh, maybe not. Yeah. I kind of hope not. I mean, I realize that we ultimately want to get to no more mutants. I realize that's an important part of the progression. Yeah. But I don't see the rush. And yeah. I don't necessarily think that, you know, showing her off decimating and you know pick your i mean quite honestly most of the x-men this would not be a contest right if scarlet mm -hmm. witch is fully fully powered i don't really know i mean who, who's really given her a great run for any extended okay. period um i mean rogue maybe if she stole all her powers but like i i mean again you're shoehorning someone who hasn't really been in the universe at all yeah be an odd choice there was a rumor that it was going to be hugh jack or they they wanted hugh jackman to be the one and he basically was going to be like in wrestling, he was going to be like, like the jobber. He was going to come in and get his butt kicked by Scarlet Witch. And I'm like, what? what is, who wants to see that? All, after all this time to have the Hugh Jackman show up in the MCU and he's going to show up to basically lay down and just get absolutely no. steamrolled by no. 
by Wanda. That doesn't right. seem like the right play. Yeah. Then there was a rumor that it might be Professor X. That's also been one that's out there. That also seems weird and just off base to throw him in. Although I know he's more of a cerebral, mental, you know, character. But mm-hmm. and I know there's also been the rumor that Storm is in Black Panther too, right? That's mm-hmm. that casting has been pointed to as maybe she's she she exists now. But again. Mm-hmm. Nah, doesn't seem. I don't think I want to see a Storm Scarlet Witch, you know, Mortal yeah. Combat in in this yeah. film. So, now nah, I'm gonna go with it's not happening, and uh, but maybe it was something that was kicked around at some point. Yeah, I mean, actually, there's the what sort of time frame would you think w- um, it will take for till we get to No More Mutant? It's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I would. St- I would be shocked if it's in this movie, though. No, I, I don't. I don't, I, 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 no, I don't think it'd be it. It feels like it has to be for her to get to that point. If there's any hom- homage to the comic books, it feels like you would have to have a pretty well developed Magneto character because he was a. He basically was a big part in controlling her and leading yeah. up to that moment. Uh, I feel like you would need to build up mutants before she says no more mutants. Like, I, yeah, that, that takes time. You can't just be like, well, we're going to assume everyone has the 20 year history here on the Fox side. Yeah. And she has this reason to say no more. Like, you got to build mutants. That feels like yeah. here. That almost feels like one of her last acts, like Elizabeth Olsen's last acts in yeah. the role to me. But there has to be. Um... After she says that, there has to be some time that passes or a movie or two um, that happens after that mm-hmm. until they come back. It's, it's just, it, to me, it sounds complicated, um, but I, I doubt that we'll get no more mutants now. No, it feels um, like phase five at the earliest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she goes to show you that uh, Elizabeth Olsen is going to be in the MCU for a minute. You know, she's going to be in this for quite some time. And I'm looking forward to that day, man, because I, I know that's what they're building towards. Uh, but how they do it will, will, and when they do it will, you know, will be interesting to see and watch um, how, how it goes down. Be interesting to revisit this discussion after Eternals as well, because if that plants any seeds for mutation and the kind of like origin of mutation and where we go from that, we might have a we might have a few more clues. Then. Before we move on, I, I I just came up with I was just thinking about something and it was like I need to ask you this question. Were you pleasantly surprised at the credit scenes with Shang Chi? Oh, you asked me to comment on this? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Moving on. Um, 19, Wonder Woman 1984 director slams films released on streaming. She says, and I quote, they look fake. Now, for all those creators, directors, and uh, people working on these films for, for streaming and TV or whatever, I'm sure they feel a way about it. Um, but let's quickly discuss what she means. And based on the article, if you read the article, she's sort of saying that, and I have a tendency to agree, she's sort of saying that these films are sort of forgotten and don't build that legendary status like, you know, Matrix and and all these other films that you remember. Like, I, you know, if I remember, you know, if I would have seen, let's say, Gladiator on streaming and it came out only on streaming or on TV, would you remember it, right? Um, will people be talking about it in, in for, for years to come? So she's saying that part of it when you stream these films, uh, they they lose that, I guess, um, what would be the word? 
they lose that. It sort of reminds me of Brad Pitt in um, the Troy film. That's why nobody will remember you. Similar to that fact. Does she have a point, Brian? Uh, where to start with this one? So mm -hmm. congrats to Patty Jenkins. I will start my stopwatch right now for you <laughs> issuing your apology on social media because that is going to be coming for all the yeah. filmmakers. As you say, everyone who partook in those movies, you basically just undermine and try to invalidate all, the, whether that's what you meant, and I know it's not, that's yeah. how it came across. Of so course. We'll be apologizing, so get ready for that. Yeah. Um, it's also a little bit, you know, this reminds me, we had this discussion about, you know, David Goyer talking about the storytelling in DC. And I'm like, well, you're the run, one who wrote Man of Steel and some of the choices there. I mean, like, you know, what did Patty Jenkins get paid to stream Wonder Woman 84? I mean, was it 13 million? Was it 15 million? It was more yeah. than 10. It was a lot. Yeah. yeah. You obviously seemed pretty on board with that at the time. And yeah. You know, albeit now she's kind of saying that her own movie doesn't have the same cachet in streaming form and never will. You know, is she totally wrong? No, but that's the society we have. People's attention spans are a fraction of what they were. The, the you know, the, that's, I get I get in a way about the the whole superhero fatigue thing because I've said to you, it's like it's it's just saturation everywhere. There's yeah. so much content. Like yeah, yeah. in the 60s and 70s and 80s like the reason why films stayed number one for 12 or 15 weeks is because a they were really good and b we weren't cranking out hundreds of movies every week yeah like studios had a budget for a handful of films put all their marketing behind it and if they were good you went and, and by the way none of us had cable so we had like four channels so like if something was good, that's all there was to see. So you were going to yeah. see it over and over again. Like those days are gone. Yeah. And I kind of, but I kind of dispute the idea that things don't stick just because they're streaming. I, yeah. I, I do think they stick. It just looks a little different. Yeah. Um, I think there have definitely been films that people still harken back. Like I know it's not, it's not going to go down as, you know, Gone with the Wind or Spartacus, but like Extraction is a movie that I think a lot of people know, talk about, harken back to because of the style of the action that was in it, you know, came out in the pandemic. You know, will that still be a movie 20 years from now people look at? I don't know, but it's definitely had, you know, a, some staying power. Yeah. Um, there are other genres. I actually think strangely, there's been some romantic comedies that have actually done, I think, found a bigger audience on Netflix um, always be my maybe set it up these are movies that would not have been blockbusters in, in the theater but yeah. because they were on streaming and everyone could say like oh go check out the Ke spoiler alert Keanu Reeves cameo and only always be my maybe people went in watched it and became viral became a thing so in that sense I do think there is a consciousness that can build around something that is really good yeah and I think that sometimes it takes a while like, yeah. you know, we've seen shows that Netflix has saved that had no audience on network TV. They go to Netflix, they become a hit four or five years later. It's just different. But the common denominator is the product has to be really good. And there's nothing wrong with that. And like, part of what I would challenge Patty Jenkins on is like, what I don't think when we look at the 2021 streaming calendar, there really haven't been that many great great films that's what i would counter with yeah. hers included of course so you know. listen if, if wonder woman 84 was dope and everybody would be talking about it i i don't know if she would be saying the same thing yeah like if that was the winter soldier to her original wonder woman i think people i think wonder woman 84 would have stuck with us this year oh yeah Oh yeah. So listen, I guess one of the things as well is that you know, it's when you're watching a movie at at home with like let's say two other people, those two other people might not be paying attention. They might be on their phones. That you know, when you're at the movie theater, for the most part, most people are paying attention to what's happening in the movies, and then you talk about it after. 
At home, is you, there's less likelihood of you doing that and having that same attention. Um, I agree with that. I think, and like, there is definitely something about experience that matters. Like I, I've talked about on this show, like going to see, you know, waited three hours to see The Dark Knight opening weekend and happened to be in a show that was, the prior show had been attended by both Chris Nolan and Steven Spielberg and they walked out to a standing ovation of all of us. Mm -hmm. Like you can't do that at home, right? You'll never yeah. get that at home. So yeah. there is that camaraderie of going to the movies that I think she's probably right about. And you remember, yeah, you know, back in the old days when people would go in costume, you remember going like and doing that stuff and you can't yeah. do that anymore. So I understand that part of it. But mm. as far as like content quality and whether like 50 years from now, if we're doing 100 greatest films of the 21st century, like I don't think the fact that you're streaming only is going to hold you back. I think like there will be people, it'll be people who have seen and found your movie. It just may be spread out over a much mm -hmm. longer yeah, period, of period of time. Yeah. Listen, we've always said this and we will continue to say the movie experience has to change so that it can sort of certainly separate home from movies. Um, but let's see if that happens one day, because I, again, the movie experience has to change. It has to be different. Um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Patty Jenkins um, saying that movies that come out on streaming look fake. Let us know in the comment section below. I guess that means Rogue Squadron. She's not going to sign up for a Disney Plus $30 <laughs> offering on that. Hey. Maybe this is why she walked from Thor 2, getting a taste of it here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, our last topic, uh, Stephen Amell is open to Arrow limited series on HBO Max or Netflix. I will not open the door to that. I am not interested in that world anymore. Fans may want him back because, you know, his portrayal of Arrow was dope. I liked it. Um, although it seemed reminiscent of Bruce Wayne and you sort of got a glimpse into what that work will probably look like. Um, but certainly, you know, one thing that I am looking forward to seeing Gotham and how that turns out. But um, yeah, I'm not interested in this, Brian. Um, I think he can go on and do other things. I don't need, I don't think he really needs to sort of harp him back to that character just because people want it. People want Hugh Jackman back and he's not coming back. You know, um, I think he should move on and find something else. Ollie Richard Ryder, right? Do something, find something, you know, but don't go back to that. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I don't think it's... Well, first off, it's not going to happen on Netflix because it's a DC character, so it would happen yeah. on HBO Max if it, yeah. if it did happen. Um, also, he made the comments, actually, on Michael Rosenbaum's podcast, so shouts to former Lex Luthor, uh, yes. Michael <laughs> Rosenbaum. You know, I, I actually think that um, it, it, Arrow did well. It obviously started the, the CW universe. It probably missed its true calling because it probably really was an HBO Max series before there was HBO Max. I actually think yeah. the, the way they went tonally, yes, yes, it went yes. about as dark as the CW was going to let them go. Yeah. But if you gave me a retcon and said, could if you wanted to go back and make it like an R-rated HBO Max version, I actually think it might have been even better. Like especially yeah, that yeah, original yeah. concept of like him escaping Definitely. the island, the list, Deathstroke. Yes. I, that could have been a really compelling HBO Max series, but I think if it happens, it will be with another another actor in another time. I think his his run is was a good oh, run, and I think yeah. he's, it's it's time it's time has come and gone, and we'll live in syndication. But and I, yeah. I have no doubt that Green Arrow will be in the DC universe at some point. some point. Yes, it just won't be him. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people have been wanting uh, Charlie Hunnam to to be Green Arrow. Yeah, he kind of looks like the queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got the, the hair and the beard, and the, yeah. He's hopefully he can get them acting chops uh, <laughs> upgraded. Anyway, there was one other thing that that that, and it was just something that Simu Liu said. 
And I think, and I hate it when into uh, reporters or interviewers ask them this question or ask anybody in, in, the, in this universe question. Um, who do you want to team up with? And, you know. <laughs> yeah. and he said, he said, oh, I, I'd like to do a film with like Guardians of the Galaxy. And like, I don't want to see that, you know? I don't want to see that. You don't belong in that world. Why do you think that that will be just because, you know, you're a charismatic guy, you're a funny guy, you like um, Chris Pratt, and you think it'll be funny or what? That's not what we're looking for. It's similar to Ray Fisher when they asked him this question. He said he wanted to fight Brainiac. That's not your character. You don't belong in the same room unless there's, you know, a big Justice League situation and where, where but you in a solo film with, no. What were you, what did you think when he said that? But yeah, but he's not, he's not pitching it though. I think he's no. just having, he's just having fun based on his own consumption of the MCU and basically yeah. saying like, what would bring the fanboy out in you? What set mm. would you want to be on? And he's saying, I want to be on a Guardian set. It's not. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No one's in a room being like, quick, Young Chi, too. Let's go to space and team up with (laughs) Starlord. Yeah, exactly. That's not happening. So I don't play, as you said, I think the fault is more when the reporters, you know, lob these questions at them because they're so used to all these team ups. You're not going to get, with rare exception, you're not going to get the thoughtful answer. You're going to get the kind of the fanboy answer and yeah. that's what he gave so i don't take it that's fine i don't i don't take it that that serious i think a better question would be what would realistically what 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 character would you be uh would you want to team up with realistically um that would be a more uh specific answer that would that would let me know where their head's at in terms of this but um yeah you yeah. might have views on that after you see it so yeah um, Brian, you saw Shang Chi yesterday. I'm gonna see it Saturday. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, I'm excited to see it, and I'm hope I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm going in there, um, still high, um, but not with the expectation of it being the best thing ever. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to go see this film and I'm going in and I'm going in, not thinking about all the reviews, all the, you know, this YouTubers already talking about this morning, already talking about, um, um, mid credit scene or end credit scene explained. And, and it's like, damn, man, you just can't wait. Right. But I'm looking forward to seeing this film, man. And I'm hoping, that we can talk about it uh, soon. It's ho- hopefully by Monday, Tuesday, we can have a conversation about this this movie. But any last words, Brian? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the audience with. I hope they do go see because obviously there's no streaming option for this. Yeah. I hope they do go see Shang Chi in the theater. I think you will not be sorry that you spent money to see it. Um, and I'll just leave you with the one cryptic. It's not necessarily the movie you think it is. Okay. Okay. You take that however you want. Yeah. But. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. Thank you for joining us once again on the Nerd Gem Report. Please hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, share it with your friends. We really do uh, appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Okay.